Um, I actually <laughs> had the worst pregnancy ever. Um, uh. I had really bad morning sickness. So I was like, like really weak from puking all day, every day for a, like, I think it was about three months. And then I oh. had a gig and I like asked the doctors, am I okay to break and everything? They were like, yeah, as long as you don't go on your stomach, then you're fine. And I did the gig. I didn't realize how much your body changes from, cause I, you couldn't see, like I wasn't pregnant, visible, pregnant. visibly pregnant. Um, but also from being sick as well as mm. weak and changing. And then I injured my stomach. I like tore my pelvic floor muscle <gasps> and then I couldn't walk for the whole rest of my pregnancy. It got worse because he was growing on the injury. Uh. I ended up in a wheelchair before having him. It was just like a bloody nightmare. Wow. So I was convinced I wasn't going to be able to break again. Ever again. Yeah. After I had him, it was like immediately relief, like immediate relief from the pain. I was like, this is mental. Like, That's what? crazy. <laughs> yeah. I like stood up after giving, I was like, this is just Start doing like, windmills what? in the Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Com. You need the television app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com. Box created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Alright, let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be. You don't want to be anywhere else, trust me, it costs too much. <laughs> <laughs> Transmitting live to you and yours. Uh, thanks to everybody that's sharing and caring, because you know how we do, we, we don't do it without you, you know. Um, to sporting art. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight, nolpolandrecords.com and also big up strangestation.co.uk. Big shout out to everyone that's got the Killer Television app. Killer Vision app. Uh, free download for your iPhone um, and Android needs all street culture and more to sporting art. And it goes without saying, if you're in the UK and uh, we're talking about sporting art, uh, the Bergening uh, breakdance scene of the UK is flourishing right now. And big shout out to all the original dons that set the path, the, 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 the pioneers, the trailblazers. Your flowers is most definitely here on the podcast. And uh, some flowers that are most definitely due is with a, a young lady that's sitting right beside me, your left, my right. Uh, she's come up for the ranks, uh, a legend in the making, trust me. We got rocks inside the place. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> we made it. Finally. <laughs> we got there. We had no preconceived ideas about today. We did. We had a couple of shots at this, but finally got you in. Yeah. I'm so pleased. <laughs> so pleased. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks. How's it been for you? How's How's it been since the B-Boy Champs? Because we were only talking. For those that you're watching at any day, this was about three weeks ago, wasn't yeah. it? Wow. How was it for you? Um... Yeah, Champs was good. Um, I haven't really braked much since I had my son. Two, he's two now. He just turned two. Ah, what's his name? Leo. We got Leo. Yeah. Hold tight, Leo. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're probably too young to watch this, but when you're older, we're <laughs> repping you. God. Um, yeah, so it was just one of my first jams back, like, barely training. I just, like, I was like, yeah, whatever, let's just go have fun. Um, I came fourth. Which was cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I beat the one person I wanted to beat. So I was like, yeah, I can chill now. <laughs> yeah, really, really. It's quick. You, you literally went, oh, it's like a cigar. I can chill now. I went and got the. Per- <laughs> you had your eyes set on someone that you wanted to get. You it sounds like you didn't even care what place you came. I'm just, just going to gun her hard. <laughs> I mean, I've never particularly been <clears throat> too concerned about winning or anything. I just don't want to look whack. Uh... And like, I'm like, maybe just do like one round that I like so I can get some nice footage, keep yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's all I've, I mean, I wish that I cared more about winning because then I'd probably win more, but. You could have fooled me. <laughs> the way you were going at it on the floor. Um, One thing, and it's, it's guys, because we are jumping in reasonably quickly here because I feel like when you've experienced seeing a breakdance uh, competition, b-boy competition. It is, certainly is this feeling of like relativity. Like I feel like I know you because I've seen you play. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Roxy is 
one of those kind of characters on the floor that is so methodical. I feel like you've, you articulate. <laughs> it, it, it's a finesse. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so when you say, oh, I don't even come, come to necessarily compete. I think to me, from what it shows on the floor, you're quite in competition with your own self. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> That's crazy that you say that. Yeah, I really, um, usually I like, panicking inside and everyone's like you look so confident and I'm like I mean that's the part that I'm I'm expressing but I'm also like yeah stressing out trying to remember what to do that's the main thing I forget all my moves really yeah so I'm like I'm like, do this move, do this move. Do, and then I and then I come out and I'm dancing and then I'm like, shit, I forgot the move, first move that I was going to do. No. <laughs> and then it all starts crumbling. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. Then they have a beatbox. But then everyone's time. like, yeah, you did sick. You look really comfortable. I'm like, yeah. Just yeah. wipe the sweat beads away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quietly die over there. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's knowing when the deck of cards is falling and how far down the deck of cards it's yeah. fallen down from. Um, but I, I felt like I put less pressure on myself at Champs because I'm not really like... 100% I, I relaxed more and I perform way better when I'm relaxed I'm like whatever if I lose it don't really matter apart from the one person I wanted to beat and then mm. I did so I was like oh I'm chilling now <laughs> anything else is just a bonus <laughs> yeah. I have never heard of anybody <laughs> just being I mean it's very it's very boxing-esque isn't it it's like you only had one side and that was just to take someone out yeah I mean I don't think people are like that anymore the like because of the way that breaking has changed, it's about winning. Mm. I mean, I know lo loads of people are, most people are competitive that do any kind of sport or mm. like competitive art form or anything. So um, people always want to win. Like who doesn't want to win? I want to win. Like mm. it'd be cool to win, but I'm like, I don't really care. If I do good and I lose, then I'm like, cool, whatever. Mm. Whereas other people will get angry. Like people will cuss, like people want to fight people call out the judges they battle the judges afterwards if they feel if they feel like they got robbed and stuff yeah hold on gossip so what happened afterwards was there any like backstage action <laughs> like the b-boy not, champs not at this one from what i know anyway happy? <laughs> i really want to hear this all right so they have been yeah Give me people some examples, always call fam. out the judges yeah like you can just youtube like judges call out and then you see them people are cussing each other going have you voted against me the whole time but it's subjective like people are voting for who they think like won or lost sometimes people are hating and voting for their own people and their crew mm. and stuff but do you think there is an element of that the uk b-boy champs you think that uk was always going to be slightly more on a pedal stool to other countries i mean this is an extremely spicy question <laughs> but you know what i'm saying do you think do you think there's a a, a, a patriot to, to UK B-Boy Chants upholding level um, of... I don't even... I, well, how many UK judges was there? I think there was only Renegade that was from oh, UK. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I stand corrected. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. I, I don't... UK usually are, let's just say, the harshest on the UK people, mm -hmm. usually. Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> they take it out on the... They take it out on the competitions rather than on the practice rooms. Is that what it is? But there is another country that always votes for the same country. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be a great podcast. Talk to me. <laughs> nah, French judges are notorious, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, French... French crew, hold tight, come on, but because you, I got, I got hold, hold the fucking crown to you guys. They are the most ridiculous. I mean, the tenacity of, of French b boys and b girls is yeah. just insane, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, just yeah, it's crazy. Like how, um, like French b boys and U.S. b boys were kind and Korean, South Korean, mm. for so long Dominant. were top dogs. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And there's still like a few from each country now, but mm. it's just completely changed. Like, the, like Danny Dan was at, at UK Champs. He's one of the top dogs, but he's one of the only ones now. Like really, really, really yeah. Was Lee French? Lee was French as well, wasn't he? Was Lee, no, he's from Holland. Okay, yeah, so he's a joke. <laughs> he's so good. <laughs> Yo, I, I tell you what, you always remember the names, don't you, that are just like... Yeah, oh, just... Are different universe. Roxy, I mean, you come from a nice balanced area of like old school and new school. 
um, more so new school in my mind, but you'll remember some of the legacy holders of, when I think of France, I think like Junior, do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. just like how he was just an anomaly of like, yeah. law against physics, law against, you know, and then of course style elements and uh, from over here, Scarecrows and Seconds mm -hmm. of None and yeah, yeah. Born to Rock. And I'm part of Second to None. <sighs> <you? laughs> yeah. And bring pedigree around here, Frank. Come on. Um, and that's what I mean. See, like you've cut cut chops with some of the more highly regarded mm, old school guys. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into the old school of it all. How did it all begin for you? Where did you begin breaking? Um, <clears throat> I started like I think two thousand and six. It's like a little bit of a blurry start, I think. Um, but yeah, I was like sixteen. Mm. Um, my brother dances. Um, he's won B World Champs, Poppin. Nice. And his name? Brooke. I'll type Brooke. Big up, my guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I started like following him, but I was kind of mm. shy to actually dance. And then I met a couple of breakers and then I just was like, can you show me that move? And then I was like... <laughs> and everyone's like, oh! And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I think I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just got into it really hardcore like straight away <clears throat> I was like when I started I was like um going down the wrong path a little bit oh really um well technically or in life in life a bit um not really going down the wrong path but like I, I used to do trampolining um I was like world class for for a youngster oh shit um and then I broke a bone in my back and then I stopped and then my nan died and I was oh. like really like sad. Yeah. And then my boyfriend at the time went to prison and I got jumped for being with my boyfriend at the time and then I had to leave my college because it was like in that area. Oh. And then I was just like, I hate my life. And yeah. <laughs> Just one thing after another. Sometimes yeah, it's just yeah, a yeah. tipping point. It was just like it? a, yeah, a bad time. So and then, to hear about your nan as well, man. That's... Yeah. I guess that's really the, the emotional linchpin of it all. It's like everything else, like I say, is just a jet stream of just like one thing after another. Yeah. It's like if your emotions weren't as so rocked, you'd probably deal with it as it comes. Mm. But when something is yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it just like made me just put all of that into breaking. Because, mm. um, you know, it's like hip hop has come from struggle and like expressing your struggle through something better than mm. fighting and like bullshit basically. Mm. So yeah, when I started, I just fell in love with it straight away mm. and I was talented. Like I was mm. physically good. So it was easier to love it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, what about yeah, your back? Cause went... I'm curious about the broken back bit. So yeah. how does that, you know, coming into breaking the way you did, because there'll be some people out there that are watching and are just like, yeah, but I've got a handicap of X, Y, Z, or yeah. this has happened and I was really good at that. Yeah. Well, yeah. like you say about Junior, he he had polio mm. um, and he's my hero. He's mm. just Legend. incredible, unique, like just hardcore still now. Like mm. he was my, he was like my biggest inspiration when mm. I first started and he's still my biggest inspiration now. Like he's Lovely just, guy as he's well, just, man. Yeah, and he's so humble. Mm. He's just like... A joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, it's amazing. Yeah, it's like I was at a competition like the same weekend as UK Champs, um, <clears throat> and but one of the B boys. Yeah, two. <laughs> hold on, <laughs> two competitions in one weekend. Yeah. Yo, well, this isn't this is normal. I'm back. Yo. <laughs> no wonder, like, yo, I could carry on. <laughs> But yeah, um, there, there was a guy, there's a Brazilian b-boy who's got one leg and he's like literally insane. He's so good. Like wow. he's so good. It, Do we have his name? Um, Samuka. Samuka, when you're yeah. darling on that, Samuka. Yeah. <sighs> he's crazy. He's just too good. But yeah, there's like, there's not much excuse because it's so open and free. You can break in any way that you need to. Like mm. some people just go out and stay on their feet and they can still roast someone. Mm. So it's like, yeah, it's very, very individual. So whatever uh, your body is able to do, you can, you can do, you know. That must have inspired the hell out of you. Knowing that you, okay, it, it kind of 
puts your handicap at a bit of a gun because you know you're you're with the right exercises and mentoring your back would be fine <laughs> but, I think it was lucky because I was young like mm. when I was like 15 mm. when I broke my back but it wasn't I was I wasn't in a wheelchair I wasn't like I was just in pain but breaking is like kept my um, core strong which helps mm. Like as soon, when I had my baby and I stopped breaking for such a long time, my mm. back's hurting more, way more than ever now. I'm like, I need to break again. <laughs> because it's, you're, less, you're used to the nimbleness of it. Yeah. Exercising really does heal a lot of things as well. Mm. I would imagine with having so much trauma coming into your life from your nan upwards and all that other stuff, um, exercise in general is a really good, uh, has medicinal purposes. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, for sure, yeah. And having breakdancing in your life gave you a more of a, a, a roadmap. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. At least, you know, breakdancing, you, you stretch, you get ready. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the same with, with skateboarding, but I just always feel like with skateboarders or BMXs, it, it's, un, it's, not, it's never going to end particularly well, is it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She's going to hurt. That's going <laughs> to, especially the BMXs, the way they're swinging the, the, the handlebars around. I'm like, bro, like, I. Even I mean, just riding on London streets is bad enough, but flying in air mm. and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that, that's the thing with the way that it's changing now as well. People are like learning to warm up properly and cool down properly and condition in between. Mm. I never did any of that. I used to go, break. Like I'd be excited when I got there. So I'd go ham mm. immediately. First throw down, go ham. <laughs> and then wonder why I spent my whole career injured. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, the first time I rested was when I had my baby. <laughs> really? And then you... Re Hold on. So when you did have your baby, was it... Because there's a lot of questions, actually, within within that subject. So, first of all, just to finish off what we're, what we're going yeah, to... Yeah, sorry. Do, no, 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 not at all. Um, you, uh, you had your baby. Did you feel like there was in, uh, injury from not stretching, from having that rest after having your child? Well, um, I actually... <laughs> had the worst pregnancy ever. Um, oh. I had really bad morning sickness. So I was like, like really weak from puking all day, every day for a, like, I think it was about three months. And then I oh. had a gig and I like asked the doctors, am I okay to break and everything? They were like, yeah, as long as you don't go on your stomach, then you're fine. And I did the gig. I didn't realize how much your body changes from, cause I, you couldn't see, like I wasn't pregnant, visible, pregnant. visibly pregnant. Um, but also from being sick as well as weak mm. and changing. And then I injured my stump. I like tore my pelvic floor muscle <gasps> and then I couldn't walk for the whole rest of my pregnancy. It got worse because he was growing on the injury. Uh. I ended up in a wheelchair before having him. It was just like bloody nightmare. Wow. So I was convinced I wasn't going to be able to break again. Ever again. Yeah. After I had him, it was like immediately relief, like immediate relief from the pain. I was like, this is mental. Like, That's crazy. What? <laughs> yeah. I like stood up after giving, I was like, this is just Start doing like, windmills in the <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> but then I didn't try and break for like a while after, like, you know, a couple months later, I, I tried a handstand and I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. to me, that's been so easy from like, you know, most of my life it's, just so easy for me to hand, just, just handstand like I chill and talk to people and like it's so normal and I was like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like okay yeah I'm actually done like I'm not gonna be able to break again <laughs> like sad wow <laughs> and then like it was about a month later or something that I tried again and I was like way stronger so holding the handstand I was like that was weird I didn't do anything in between apart from carrying my son yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm like I'm my body is fixing itself like so quick. That is, like what an inspiration story. So when when I think of soldiers, right? Because there was a couple of guys that used to go to my gym, right? It's, follow me here. And so <laughs> there was a couple of guys that used to go to the gym, and they used to have these big heavy sacks on their backs, running. And then they did it again, put masks on their backs, and they're running. Do you know what I mean? And they're creating this level of mental resistance, or at least some sort of handicap to what they're doing. So then all of a sudden, you take the bags off and stuff, and you can run like yeah, ten thousand yeah, miles yeah. faster. Um, not literally, but <laughs> but where I'm coming to with this is, did it feel in in a sense that that liberating feeling of, uh, of course, assurance that thank God I can still break, but where you were kind of held back in a way 
yeah. with the pain and with the with having having your baby, this suddenly felt like you can move. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. I've I haven't felt felt so motivated since I was like sixteen or something like that. Like I'm so like I want to. I'm so desperate to break now. Like I really like. Yeah, it's so it's been so nice for me. I've always been like really like negative and hard on myself. Like I and I had loads of surgery on my eyes over my career. I've never really felt um I never had like even a year of training. Like it's always been like a cup a month of training and then an injury and then another bit few bits and bobs of training and then like I've had seven operations on my eyes. So it's like a year of recovering after that and what like was just, the eyes just just general um, short-sightedness or something well, i was partially sighted uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, i'm saying <laughs> the odds are against here is she like... <laughs> yeah i mean i'm still here baby <laughs> yo tell you no games i'm give me some Give me, come on, that is fucking amazing. Okay, so oh, you've got these things, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you're okay now. We were, there's I'm been no that. other. Good, right, I good. got my provisional driving license this year. Oh, awesome. That's the first time I've been legally allowed to and drive since oh, I was 17. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's no joke. That, yeah, that's, that's one of the things. Like, yeah. yeah, my mum has these kind of eyes as partially sighted stigmas and stuff like that and it's always a result when someone gives you a qualification like that that is very much lent on whether you can do certain things that's almost like well if i got that i can do anything mm. so it's that vibe isn't it yeah um so your your eyes are sorted you're you're back to almost reset and you're yeah. coming into it yeah. and so uh, the best way i can think of it as is if if, if i've got like a, a broke tooth beatboxing or my jaw my throat i've got a cold it's like these things they they they, they come like buses <laughs> you know what i mean and all you're trying to do as, a, as an artist is just try and clear that road for as long a period as yeah, time yeah yeah because you know there's something big coming around the corner yeah what's the big thing around the corner for you that at the moment everything seems to be coasting nicely yeah What's the big thing in your life? I just need to make sure I've got this shit down. Mm. Um, Olympics, the qualifiers for the Olympics. When's yeah, the qualifiers? When's, that, when's the qualifiers on it? I'm still a little blurry on it, but mm. there, I think there's like a bunch of comp, comps that you can qualify. You can like gain points, or if you win one of them, then you qualify. It's a bit confusing, mm. but um, they're coming up, and I just want to. I still, because I have my son, I'm a single mum, so I have him all the time. Mm. Um, I don't get much time away from him, so I don't really get to practice. But mm. for me, the Olympics is amazing. I really want to do it. Like, I really, really want to be there. Mm. But also, I just want to feel good. If I can feel like, yes, I'm good. Like, mm. I'm, I'm like, I never even felt like that in my prime. Mm. I've, I don't feel like I've peaked at all. I feel like I've got way more to give I just need this clear road to stay clear. Mm. Like I'm um, get rid of all the rubbish now. Mm. I've I'm done it all. <laughs> There's no more parts of my body to be broken. <laughs> Touch yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, like uh, it's that karate kid uh, endurance. It's uh, it's cinematic. It's like be your own hero, and like what you're saying kind of holds true. I think dare I say it because you're incline is strong but it feels like you've said to yourself the best is yet to come which actually plays out really well as a viewer <laughs> you get what i'm saying it yeah. is it's a cinematic approach to things um i'm just gonna who do you want to be <laughs> <laughs> who do you want to fucking take out like you cut we we okay we've explored the self-motivational stuff now let's get to the nuts and bolts here <laughs> who do you want to take out now It doesn't have to be from UK neither. It can be anywhere you want. Yeah, it wouldn't be from the UK. No. Um, the thing is, I just want to compete against guys again because all the comp competitions are separate now. Uh -huh. It's all B-girls yeah. versus B-girls yeah. and B-boys versus B-boys. And mostly I'm not... I don't I don't really like the... 
I, I feel like Beagle battles have been really necessary for a long time because mm. there's not been much inclusion mm. and there's hardly been any Beagles. Um, but I've it's always made me compete against guys and I'm like, I don't know, I just yeah. like, I'm, I just I yeah, can yeah. smoke you. Yeah. Like, and I get that feeling, but a lot of the time I don't get that from Beagles. Like, it's just quite polite. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm just like... Yeah. Not really. I don't know. It's just the categorized, like the not as good categories. That's what it feels like. That's why you I reckon- don't get that motiva- motivation. Yeah. Oh, There's man. Like- I don't, I, I, I feel, I f- maybe it comes from a place from your side because, um, because the, because the, it's a, it's a minority sport. You're, you're going practice and it mostly be with guys and girls, right? Probably mm. more guys. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so when you're in this lane of the shows, you must feel like, yeah, actually, I'm that sense of relegation because you're not playing with your peers like that. Is that what you mean? You're not playing with the guys, you're playing with the girls. So it's like a sense of relegation. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I mean, it's like there are so many girls now that are just like... Killing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing, like yeah. literally amazing. But it is, it's been the reason that there has been b-girl battles from the start is because there's it's like to help the b-girls get better yeah. and it's like i'm like well, we're kind of better now yeah, like we're, 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 we're here now we can we can like go back to yeah. to how it is you know we're, the yeah. whole point of it is that everyone's the same race age everything like yeah. there's kids there's kids battles but there's also kids that can hang yeah, with yeah, yeah. the adults you know and there's b-girls who can hang with the guys so yeah you know, look, I've I've heard it all from B boys and B girls. It's like, oh, the B girl battles are coming, are, are happening. Let's go get a drink. Like, we don't uh, particularly care to see it and stuff. But, but that's year. what's made that that motivated me a lot for my mm. whole career. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking smoke this B boy because everyone's <laughs> like, I don't want to lose to Roxy. Like, <laughs> you only get the best <laughs> on the podcast. It's a girl. That's what I'm saying, bro. You only get the best on the fuck. I need the best. Um, that's kind of what it's coming to, really, because I do feel like, I do feel like. Uh, as a as a host, and I know you've done hosting as well. I know you 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 really really awesome at this sort of thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but look, 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 I don't feel that way. I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. it's worth uh, it's as much worth as the boys. Um, and I think, like you said, it's got to the point where actually you could merge the two because the competitive level is like there's no time for discriminate. It's like because if you can smoke them, then do it. Mm. I think that needs to be the attitude, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it always it always used to be, like... But the thing is, is that, like, coming up, there was probably five top B-girls, yeah. and they all used to compete against the guys because they'd have a B-girl category and they'd struggle to get a top eight. Like, mm. as in eight girls wouldn't show up and then there'd be, mm. like, 50 B-boys. Yeah. So it's like, well... Jump that's in. why it's like, uh, like so any old girl could just get in the comp, like get into the top kind mm. of thing. Um, which so I understand it, but it's you know it's for inclusion. But it's like, ah, uh, come on, man, we're oh, yeah. here now. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. It's fine to have both, but it's just like very few B girls enter B boy battles anymore. They why, always why only enter the B girl because they battle. think they've got like more of an upper hand. Yeah. You got more of a chance. I I used to like back back before there was a lot of be good be girls. If there was a UK um, be girl battle, I'd be like, yes, I can win some money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, integrity on the Killer Killer podcast, shining ever shining through. <laughs> Just <Yeah>. being honest. <laughs> Oh, but but you. But now I can't. Cool. I'm like I still got to work for it if I do a bigo battle. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> but then there's a start somewhere and get nowhere. Like with the category, categories are going to be ever present as they always have been in the Olympic Games. Yeah, and yeah, I think okay, some of the competitors by your um, admission might be a little bit, or may have been back in the day, a little bit kind of just show up, kind of attitude or caliber but uh yeah as time goes on that's like you're saying it certainly isn't the case and mm. and what is more what i guess the next phase as a b-girl would be is actually to rival every single human yeah possible yeah yeah, yeah. which is part of the yeah. i think that's an olympic standard in itself you know yeah. i i just think that the olympics shouldn't be the be all and end all it's yeah. an amazing opportunity amazing and 
that competition is separate to the other competitions and the other competitions and the other ciphers and the other jams and mm. there's there's lots of like levels to it and mm. still being like inclusive and just going to a jam or going to a battle where there's just a breaking battle an open mm. breaking battle still do that as well mm. it's not only about olympics and mm -hmm. only doing the competitions that are going to benefit you for the olympics mm. yeah i think that's yeah and you, yeah it, it really does doesn't it we were talking just before uh, we started recording as we do and one thing that you were really i i threw the i threw the subject of 2028 and how some of the b boys and b girls that are coming into the 2022 olympics may not make it to the 2028 just because of age just because of youngsters coming up and new uh new energies coming from um businesses and corporations all getting involved because of the breakdancing i've got a feeling it's going to be a lot more of that mm. your response to that was very much from a more wholesome cultural perspective because you really love the art mm. and you're really keen as an organism seeing b-boying go the distance where it deserves to go isn't it yeah it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that, um, like I say, the Olympics is an amazing opportunity. Like, breakers can eat now. Mm. We can think about the prospect of having a house mm. without having to quit breaking or have a side job and everything. And the sponsorships are great and everything. But also, we need to remember that we're not doing sprinting. We're not like it's not just the sport it's mm. an art form as well mm. and just respect it understand it do research like know who the the elders are in our scene like mm. kind of like know a bit about where it came from like like i say still go to jams like jam sessions still yeah. like you know yeah just just we need to just maintain what it is the jazz to some degree it. the jazz in it the yeah. history the reference yeah, yeah. points the yeah. books the yeah, some things like this, I guess, that, that yeah. help cultivate a level of background knowledge. And mm. I've got a question for you. And it's something that came up a couple of days ago. Um, you've got a judging panel at any breakdance event. And of course, that is all subjective. <laughs> and, you know, whether it's performance-based, crowd-pleasing, mm. technical ability. Um, if you were to be judged... And we're talking in 2022 now where Britain seems to have talent and, you know, and the Simon Cowles of the world and these other corporations and stuff. Now, if you had a, let's, let's pick a random, a Pervez or a Dolby D or a Tough Tim Twist, uh, you had these guys that were judging you based on your technical ability or you had a cooperative, a, a not so... Uh, not so knowledgeable breakdance uh, judge like a Simon Cowell. Mm. I, I think they hold two different values. But which one would be more favourable to you as a value? Which side of the coin do you think, if you were in a massive contest and you had these guys or you had this person that was judging you based arguably in two different for two different reasons, mm. which one would you lean more towards? Um, <clears throat> for me, they always have to know about breaking. Like, if it's as far as Simon Cowell, I don't think you should be judging a breaking battle because now there's systems and everything in place for, for judging to kind of... It does make it more fair because um, on these systems, you'll have a category for the showmanship and then then the, the technical side, like, you know, the explosive, the spontaneous, the musicality. There's, there's like, sections mm. to be judged on so that you are judged fairly. Mm. Um, there, there are certain types of breakers who judge, I mean, who, who break very performatively. And then there are breakers who are very technical mm. and you're going to get different results from them a lot of the time. Um, but I, I think going as far as someone who doesn't break or hasn't got anything to do with breaking is too far. Too far. Yeah. Because there's, there's this... I think for a lot of people that are coming into discovering, as if you do, where have you been for the last 50 years? For starters, if you're just discovering breakdancing now, but, <laughs> but it comes into a real popular commercial domain, doesn't it? Mm. And to some of these youngsters coming in, like talking about historical reference points and fingers crossed, but with corporate companies taking advantage and going in on 
um, on, a, on a culture. It, it, it can often lead to like misinformation. And if you're nine, ten years old getting into... The only other thing you've seen is diversity yeah. and what might have been on ITV3 on a Saturday mm -hmm. night. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's a real... I think it's going to be an interesting time for young people getting involved and what they actually value yeah. Their, yeah. their performances yeah. by. Yeah, that's the thing that I was um, talking about earlier a little bit. Like, for kids watching, the relatability needs to be... Not needs to be, but I, I think should be... It should be relatable for people who have no money that's where it came from not mm. who you know not necessarily about the money but you know it's like for the street kids it's the street like mm. art you know i feel like it needs to not be so far away from it where they can't relate to the people who are breaking mm. and that's that's kind of getting involved um with it turning into the olympics it's like people who've got money can now pay for um they can pay for a mentor to come and mm. train with them. Mm. And it's that's not relatable to the- kind of thing. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that wouldn't have been relatable to me. The people that I saw do it, I'm like, oh, they're cool. Like mm. they look like they come from the same place. I didn't think it consciously, but you know, mm. you, you chill with the people who you mm. relate to. Mm. And it's come from hip hop where it started to where it is now. The, the people that started hip hop as, as they've grown now, are now the people who do drill, who mm. have nothing to do with breaking. Yeah. And it's like being separated. Like, and I feel like I want to like pick them back. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and like, hey, you should break. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. It is down to us. Yeah. Like, big up my boy Littles, uh, Section Boys. Like, I just dropped a freestyle with him. And, I, and for the life of me, man, I was like, yo... <laughs> I just can't imagine those kind of rappers on beatbox, but they do. And I think it's just down to us to draw it back to the uh, raw ingredients. Like you were saying, I mean, it's a class thing. Art, art at its best is that aggressive, dog-ridden determination of yeah. getting out of a thing that you're yeah. in. It's like pain. Mm. Pain creates great art. Mm. Like A lot of people who break now have no idea of struggle and it's just like that's a cool thing that i've seen on tv i want to be famous so i'm going to do break dance and mm. it comes across when they break you can see it when they break really and you might be a great physical athlete but you st you still might lose to someone who's not as great of a physical athlete but who's mm. raw and who's got emotion when they break and mm. you can feel so that's sometimes when people get upset about um losing and they come and they show you the footage they're like why did i lose look i did this move into this move and then landed on my eyebrow perfectly and then i pointed my toes uh, and this person <laughs> tripped a little bit hey, hey, like, uh, sorry bro and if you that's lost. you please go to <laughs> www dot <laughs> or leave a comment saveabreaker.com saveabreaker.com <laughs> and also by the way it doesn't necessarily this doesn't necessarily have to be a city thing you know we're talking about even on the outskirts fringes some of those um you know i was from a carrot crunching village myself and sometimes like, getting out of those factory estates is fucking impossible especially when you can't afford to get a train to the way your local hip-hop scene is it's, mm. a, it's fucking mm. hard and it's that kind of thing you're talking about with with that sort of resistance of not having the opportunities in front of you you work harder for yeah, it yeah yeah yeah, like people, um, I've heard people like hating on me because I get, I was given all these opportunities to travel and stuff. And I'm like, I wasn't given the opportunities. I used to go to events, meet people and be like, can I stay on your sofa? Like, and then I'd find the cheapest flight mm. and fly and go to the event, pay for myself to go mm. to the event, do the competition. And like, I even slept at airports and stuff like, mm. but um, that's like missing sometimes now it's like why don't people fly me out and it's like i had to um show up to then be invited i had to mm. show up and and do it myself and then people were like oh okay yeah you can come to our event <laughs> rather than people just think like oh she's just like just because she's girly it's like 
You feel underestimated? Do you feel underestimated? Not really anymore. But this was when, I, like, I feel like um, I've got a lot more respect, in, especially in the UK. I feel mm. like I've been hated on basically for my whole career. But now that I'm a mum and I people see me as I've quit, it's like, yeah, Roxy was sick. And I'm like, you weren't <sighs> saying that before, were you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, see now you know. Hey, you know who you are. There, comment below. You know who you are. You got the fucking ball. Uh, I find that incredibly. I find it first of all incredibly endearing and fucking awesome that you brought this up because I think when you become part of the furniture, it's really easy for people to consider you as part of the furniture. Mm. It's like, nah, I'm not here. To, to play games mm. just because you think I'm here to play just because you think I'm I'm openly available it's because I've worked my ass yeah, off to yeah, get yeah. and that's the, that's the fault of when you make it look easy people <laughs> think it's easy you suddenly become easy <laughs> yeah you know I mean that's what I heard at the first event that um I did after I had Leo um they were like you d- like it was five judges, I yeah. won, yeah. and the the one of the judges that voted against me was like, "Yeah, you just look like you didn't really want to be there." I was like, "I just recovered from COVID. Yeah. I had a baby. I haven't trained. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. I was trying my hardest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just did it with a smile on my face." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this ain't no sympathy vote. It's like, but don't talk shit. <laughs> you know, it's like don't talk shit. I tried hard. Mm. I had an asthma attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. My eyes dropped out. I was fucking. <laughs> I was on the floor. I what just do you want? At the end, like, <laughs> yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah, yeah. This is a, 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 and you know what? For real, for real. Like, there should be, and this is, this is part of my proposal here. I feel like there should be some backstage talk directly after the performances. Yeah. Telling the story. What's the scope of this? What, like, because it, breakdancing has got more backstory than any other. No battle. Like when you when you listen to the footballers after the game, the coach will always say what the handicaps were, what we were up against, why it mm. went. Yeah, you know I mean, mm. as an individual, you know, with with the lifestyles. It's like I think I think there's a behind the curtain side yeah. to this that I think yeah, is really yeah. important to factor in. Yeah, I I always say that like there should be a doc, there should be like a Big Brother house for breakers. It would be the most entertaining show ever, ever. <laughs> big break here, the Big Breakers house. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Guys are amazing, but the scene itself is it's like a little ecosystem. Yeah. Like, and and the more I delve into it, it's just forever expanding and it's just yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Crazy characters. Yeah, crazy characters yeah. for sure. <laughs> Who's the craziest character you've ever you, you've ever uh worked with or you know within the scene? Give me give me someone that you just like the world would not be the same without them. Oh, that's a hard one. There's so Well, because a lot of people say you because like you're such an identifiable character. <laughs> like so let's ask the character. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Oh, that's a hard question. I need to think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like in the world or in the UK? Mouse. Bit. Oh! <laughs> I got goosebumps when you said his name. Yo, Mouse. Without yeah. question. A man of two. He's like, he's got two different heads. He's just a good. He's, a, he's, he's an awesome walk of contradiction. He's, <laughs> he, isn't it? He'll banter. He's, he loves. But yeah. he fucking battles. Yeah. He's all of those things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mouse is incredible. Yeah. And nuts. Yeah. <laughs> He's all of that stuff rolled into one. Yeah. That's one. Oh, there's so That's many, my though. Guy. Wait, look, I, I like that question too much. Can mm. you think of another one? Yeah. Here's some more. <laughs> Renegade. Renegade is an anomaly. He's like the he's the most marmite of the marmites. Like again, but the world wouldn't be the, it wouldn't be the same without the spiciest him. Spiciest marmite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the yeah, He's like he's that guy. Because the thing is, as well, is if he lo- if he loves what you do, he tell you. If you don't like what you do, he fucking tell you. Mm. But you know, you know yeah. what side of the fence you're on, at least. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's my yeah. guy. Um, you know, I, I'm going to throw I'm going to throw a few names out. I think. Um, actually, I'm not going to throw a name. There was a character from Scarecrows with the afro. What was his name? Super J. Super J was fucking amazing. 
He was like the coolest fucking cat. Where are you, Super J? Come back in my life, man. He was fucking good. Cool. He'd just show up randomly. Oh, man. <laughs> I've only just seen the um, uh, a video he posted on his Instagram. He's spitting and he's cussing some breaking crew. Oh, shit. <laughs> See, I'm saying that's that shit. Smack 19, the crew that won UK champs. He's on them? He's cussing them. Oh, he's, God. he's cussing them about a different event where he was judging and he voted against them. Really? Yeah. See, I'm saying about this drama. Yeah, bear, Honestly, bear drama. Bear drama. Yeah. It's like it's fucking EastEnders and Coronation <laughs> Street. This is like. That's what I'm saying. If there was a flipping Big Brother house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of an awesome pun that could. But, uh, and also. I have to, I just have to shout Dolby D for his absolute pure gun tongue. <laughs> I'm coming at y'all. Yeah, I mean, big up Dolby. He just tells it like it fucking is. Yeah, you know I mean, his uncle Dolbs, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But that's like, they're all from earlier generations. Yeah. And that's, that's like, yeah, that's, mm. that's a little bit missing from today's generation. What, the attitude? Well, like, Tell it like it is. I think it's, um, you know, with social media and everyone, everything, everyone's friends with everyone. Mm. Like, most of my friends are not from England. They're from everywhere. That's how, like, it's the best bit, life is, is now. Yeah. But it kind of stops the, like, the, like, it used to be like, this is this is London people. Like, this is, mm. we're from LA. We're from New York. Like, we're mm. from France. It was all separate and, like, then when we come together, the, the battles would be like real, like it was like real. Like, Territorial. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a really good point. I yeah. Think. But it's like now everyone's friends with everyone. So it's like they come and it's like, mm. yeah, yeah, battle you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, not always. There's still, you get some real battles, but a lot of the time it's put on. Yeah. And that's when it's like. Mm. Staged. Mm. It's interesting you say that because as international artists as we are, how often do we get on our WhatsApp and without even a single thought talk to someone in America yeah. whilst talking to someone in France, whilst yeah, talking yeah. to someone in Australia? Yeah. It's like, that's the world we're in now. So mm -hmm. psychologically, we don't hold the same integrity to the places we are at. Yeah. We're, we're at. Yeah. It's true, isn't it? Mm. And that is the complete uh, flip side of the coin where it comes to uh, patriotism to your country. and Because in a way, it's like, it's only a fun battle, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and back in the day, it really wasn't. <laughs> but that's what I mean. That's why when there's like someone I don't like or someone I I want to battle, mm. it's like, oh, I feel so good. Like mm. it feels different mm. because most of the time it's like that's my friend, not necessarily a friend, but like you know I know you, I talk to you, I know you, mm. I talk to you. Mm. It's like rare that you find someone that's good and either just don't know because then you can bring it out mm. or like yeah it's everyone knows everyone everyone's all like we are in the same camps together and mm. like and that yeah that that's the thing that um obviously like like you say like hip-hop like life is always changing and growing and mm. then there's things that are gonna we're gonna like go away from mm. but there's some things that need to stay and like still having genuine like battles where you mean it mm. they need to stay they gotta stay that's why you gotta put them in a big brother house <laughs> let them fight each other and then when it comes to the battle it's gonna be fire exactly. get them nominated <laughs> out if you don't like them if you like them keep them in actually you know what as you were saying as you were saying all this i suddenly thought to myself yeah because even with social media like you've got you gotta take stock of some of your moves and stuff because you don't want your friends getting over familiar with him because it really does come down if you're all friends with each other then it really does come down to what you pull out the bag yeah yeah it's yeah. all about the skills really isn't it because mm -hmm. we can all be chummy but i might not be chummy with you for just this one move <laughs> i might just yeah you know i mean yeah yeah that's what it's come down to isn't yeah. it yeah <coughs> sometimes you have people who are like friends and then they come out in the battle and they're like yo this whack and then go in ham and you're like just in, you were just in my DMs yesterday. How oh, very do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it's so yeah. weird. Like. <laughs> it's like you feel like giving the judge the DM messages. Look, he was really fucking nice to me yesterday. Now, look at it. 
Yo! <laughs> it will come to that as well. That's some big brother move right there. Yeah. <laughs> What's the future, Roxy? What's the future for you? See, you're really hell bent. You're on this. This is your. You're trying to sustain a level of health and uh, prosperity whilst getting towards. The yeah. Top. That, I mean, that's what I want. Um. Right now, it's just about trying to get, like, trying to figure out how I can get time to actually practice. That's mm. like the now goal mm. um once i start practicing like i i feel so much motivation that i'm i'm gonna be cool mm. that's just yeah that's where i'm mm. and like i'm still doing other things like hosting and like judging mm. and yeah but i just so like sick. i'm just enjoying like not not being blind not being being in available. pain, yeah, so. <laughs> not being pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Let the past be the past, sisters. Uh, I'll say this much. Speaking to other <laughs> contemporaries of yours and being on a podcast with them, they hold, they hold you very much in high regard for 2022 and I think a lot of them are very excited to see your progress. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Thank you. So roll that out. Be there. That's it. Be there. Be there. Make sure you're there as well. Big up, Roxy. Hold tight. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming me. down. <laughs> it's good, wasn't it? Hey? Killer Keller podcast out like animals out of fashion. You know what to do. Stay on the Insta. Keep in touch with Roxy. You see all the progress as we go along on the podcast as well. Sharing is caring. All right. Uh, tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We're out like animals out of fashion. Stay lucky, people. Peace. <laughs>